one. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this week's pipeline authoring SIG. Uh, like all SIGs, we adhere to the Jenkins Community Code of Conduct, which basically means be excellent to each other. Uh, looks like we, we have a pretty small attendee list. Some people had some conflicts today, but we can recap last week's action items and see if there's any new topics we want to talk about. The link to the Google Doc is, um, is in the Zoom chat. I can share my screen to, to show it. All right. All right, so last week we talked about the 40 pages that Mark had highlighted for opportunities to, to improve documentation. Um, we considered going through each of those issues and labeling which ones are best aligned to this SIG. Um, I guess Oleg, one, one question about that. How would we go about adding labels to these PRs? Who has the authority to, to add labels? Yeah, so for labels right now, uh, um, so we have two teams. One team is copy editors. So basically the team which reviews pull requests. And we have recently introduced the triage team, which is basically responsible for initial processing of issues and pull requests. And they also have permissions uh, to label items. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, so maybe right the way now, we should handle it is when we mm -hmm. identify those issues, we can open a new issue that just like provides a list of other issues that should get the pipeline authoring label. And then maybe the, the triage team or the copy editor team can then work off of that issue to label the other ones appropriately. Does that yeah, sound like a plan so or do you? Or that's one of the ways. Another way we could just create an issue template because uh, I've recently added the issue template uh, to this repository. And for example, it allows uh, common users uh, to still submit issues with labels, even uh, though they have no permissions in principle. Uh, so uh, all approaches work, but uh, yeah, like we discussed last week, I'm not really sure that uh, there is any open issue which is which would concern the pipeline authoring seek. Uh, maybe just one issue or two issues. Okay. But uh, yeah, there are only a few issues uh, because the most of the documentation should be already on Jenkins IO for pipeline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, I think I probably agree with that. I'm not even sure that the, the CPS mismatch one is necessarily an authoring concern, right? The, we could probably say it fits in the SIG if we want to stretch, but um, I'm not sure if it's a one-to-one -one map. Um, I, I can take a look at it though. I'm, yeah. Um, Any reviews would be appreciated. So the other, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we also talked about the the, the hack fest that's going on. Uh, I see we added a, a discussion topic for today, Jenkins UI UX Hackfest pipeline authoring. So I, I'm trying to think, you know, is there an opportunity for the Hackfest? Is Blue Ocean end of life, right? Is there, is there maybe something around improving the pipeline visualization and the Jenkins UI um, in a way that's not as extreme as, as Blue Ocean? Uh, that would be within scope for that? Yeah, and moreover, there is already a project idea for that. I'm not sure whether we published it uh, on the website, but it's definitely on the steering uh, document. So we have a Google Doc, which is linked uh, from the mailing list. Um, just a second, I'll put a link uh, to the meeting notes. And uh, in this document, uh, we basically accept uh, any project ideas. Uh, um, but as long as they relate to user experience and as long as there is somebody behind them who's interested to work on them or co uh, coordinate the effort. So just a second, uh, I'll uh, paste uh, a link. So this one, uh, I will show you yeah, this pipeline bookmarks. 
Uh, so it's uh, basically pipeline visualization. I can open this up and take a look. Yeah, so right now it's a wide open idea, so we haven't published it on the website because we need uh, to at least uh, provide some context there. So if you ask me, I would be happy to just say, let's put a pipeline browsing from BlueOcean inside the Jenkins interface. Uh, well, it's easy to say that. The problem that I'm not really <laughs> ready to commit enough time to do that. Uh, but if there is strong interest from pipeline or during SQL or whomever to work on that during the hackathon, it would be nice. Uh, yeah, maybe something closer to the current state. So, for example, uh, yeah, we have pipeline templating engine, which could be somehow contribute to, could somehow contribute to user experience. So, same for example for remote file uh, plugin for multi branch or maybe even for pipeline and YAML. We could probably find some topics there uh, because yeah, hackathon is just five days, and doing lotion migration in five days means that we need a team of experienced contributors to spend full time on that. Which is technically yeah, doable, but, but uh, uh, I'm not sure whether we are ready to organize it. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, so for UI UX, is this are we primarily focusing on like design, CSS, like look and feel type topics mm -hmm. for the tech fest? Yeah, mostly look and feel. So just uh, we have three tracks there. One track is user interface, which includes you look and feel, probably navigation and uh, all other improvements, uh, also accessibility and other topics. There is user documentation topic, which again may include some uh, pipeline related stuff, for example, documenting features and uh, including features to, into the main documentation. Because right now we have uh, pretty good documentation for core pipeline uh, on Jenkins IO. Uh, but if you try to look for particular uh, plugins, uh, most likely you won't find any documentation there because plugins are kind of isolated. And uh, if uh, the, we had some time to connect all the documentation and plugin pages, uh, it would be nice because Python, yeah, it's several dozens of plugins, even more. And, uh, uh, even if core pipeline is documented pretty well, uh, ecosystem is not documented well. So, yeah, maybe. I think that's a common challenge I see people run into, right? It's like they'll see a pipeline step and they'll mm -hmm. sort of look in the, the pipeline documentation, but that step's coming from a particular plugin. So I've, I've seen that people have like a hard time figuring out mm -hmm. where is this particular method being contributed from and where the documentation for that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, my concern about offering ideas is like then being able to commit the time to to actually fuel those during the the hack fest, which is always the hard part, right? I have lots of ideas, but I don't know how much time I have. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, there are two ways basically submit something you would like to work on yourself or if you see that you have some time to coordinate the effort, then submit something uh, what you would like to coordinate. Uh, there are definitely some uh, abstract ideas we could put on the list, but for me it doesn't make much sense because we already have quite a list there. So I would rather focus on putting real ideas. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think anything we put on there should be something accomplishable within the five days um, or, you know, maybe a prototype of something that could be accomplished in five days. And then maybe the folks that participate can drive it after the hack fest to finish it off or something. But abstract ideas are going to be hard to, to actually make tangible progress on um, unless there's already like wireframes or something like that. Mm, yeah. One idea which we could try and which could be interesting. 
uh, is to have a pipeline uh, landscape. Uh, so yeah, just uh, put a link uh, to CNCF landscape. But basically without investing massive effort in documentation itself, uh, maybe creating uh, a kind of index where people could uh, find uh, plugin, etc. So if That's you have idea. CNCF, um, CNCF uh, landscape. Yeah, the, the 7,000 tools that, that uh, comprise CNCF. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so That's, probably it's a bit, uh, yeah, CNCF landscape is definitely a pretty difficult thing to navigate. Uh, but yeah, if we have created something for pipeline, I, it could have been easier. Uh, it could provide some benefits. Well, like I'm, yeah, I'm not understanding what you're envisioning with this landscape presentation. So this looks like uh, mm -hmm. vendors or comp products that are in the uh, in the so for me area. It's, uh, for me, it's just use cases. So for example, pipeline, we can have area like tools and then we put plugins like pipeline, Maven plugin uh, or whatever. Then we have uh, area multi-branch pipeline. And then uh, we, there we put remote, remote file plugin. Uh, we have a core area and then we put all core plugins like pipeline job, et cetera. So, so the, the idea is each card would be, each card in this would be potentially a plugin or a collection of plugins. And then the, 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 the grouping rectangles are categories or collections that, that those things might fit into. Yes, something like that. Also maybe- I could see there being a category for like, go ahead, Anton. Uh, maybe enhancing this, uh, this structure to all plugins will be much more better because it's very hard to find what you need in the plugin side, even you search, but you need to go to lots of plugins and descriptions. Mm -hmm. so not only maybe limiting for the pipeline, but also for the other things that maybe we can group together. Yeah, we started some grouping effort on uh, the plugin side. So for example, recently we introduced uh, categorization of plugin through GitHub topics. Uh, and it was applied to many plugins. Uh, now you can query for Kubernetes plugin, for uh, Azure plugins, etc. You can also query for pipeline plugins, but it just doesn't help too much because you, you get uh, almost a hundred of plugins there. Yeah. So auto generating something like that would be nice. Uh, uh, better navigation on the plugin side would be also nice. And if you're interested to propose something specific in this area, I think we, we could work on that because I spend some time uh, regularly to improve uh, plugin site, uh, specifically navigation and plugin search. Because I totally agree with you that it's impossible to find anything here, there. Yeah, I mean, like Jenkins is very rich when it comes to plugins. So, like, I mean, yeah. I think it would be nice. Maybe, like, uh, I don't know, maybe using some labels or something like. Yeah. Or maybe some maybe smart search something like that. Um, it will be much more make easier for people to find what they need because it can be really hard. Yeah, so if you're when interested, you search, I, sorry. When you search for plugins, do they show? Does the results come up in like first founders? It's sorted by like number of installs or something. So that uh, when I search for a particular, go ahead. There are multiple search options. So if you want, I can just show it to you. Yeah, sure, I can stop sharing. Yeah. I might need to make you the host, which... Right. So, All right, you're the host now, you should be able to share. Yeah, thank you. So do you see a new top right now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here's, here's our plugin site. Um, again, uh, yeah, there is a lot of things under development there, but uh, there are significant improvements. Uh, 
So here you can search uh, just for pipeline or for whatever. You can uh, sort things. So for example, relevance, most installed, trending, it's the recent installations, title, etc. And Daniel Beck has recently introduced uh, metadata for uh, well, uh, for plugin rating in uh, update centers. It just hasn't been ex exposed here yet, but eventually it will be here. So they, we wanted to have a kind of plugin uh, ranking based on various conditions like uh, quality, etc. And uh, Daniel started doing uh, grant work for that. You can also search for particular cases. So for example, here you can see that um, there are labels. Right now we don't have label for multi-branch pipeline, for example. It's something we could fix. Um, but yeah, these labels are basically managed uh, right now through GitHub topics. So you as a plugin maintainer can just put a number of labels and they will automatically update on the, appear on the plugin site uh, in a few hours. So I am going to add a few labels to a, to a particular repository right now to make sure yeah, right. it, some uh, labels so show up on the site. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, try uh, to find uh, this particular repository. Pipeline template. Uh, uh, yeah, you might need to search like templating engine and it shows up as the first one. Okay. Um, or it, it did on my screen. So yeah, our search is not exactly Google, so it uh, it's not uh, that tolerant uh, with regards to mistakes. Yeah, here you can see that the, the plugin has no labels at all. So right now it won't appear. And the labels are useful because labels also appear in uh, plugin manager now. So it's not on the plugin side. In uh, Jenkins plugin manager, uh, uh, all labels appear. And thanks to Daniel, he keeps improving that part as well. But, oh, even gifts? Cool. So, <laughs> yeah, you can improve uh, navigation, you can add tables, say, for example, for remote file. Uh, okay, so it's here. It has a pipeline label, but for example, for this plugin, I guess we really need a multi branch la label. Mm -hmm. Because with the current name, uh, you need to read the description to understand what it is exactly about. Or maybe it's actually better to rename the plugin, at least the display name, I don't know. Yeah, like um, for that plugin, yes, maybe just, mm -hmm. but for the others, I mean, even, even like a person who has experience or years in Jenkins, it can be really sometimes tough to find what you are searching for, maybe indexing the documents from with uh, from the git hub readme files maybe can help people to mm -hmm. find what they need yeah uh, that's right. search techniques mm -hmm. so right now we index uh, name and the plugin description yeah so we don't uh, index uh, the full page for this site well, if you use Google, yes, you will get a full index. Yeah, of course. Um, but, yeah. Let's think about it because I mean, mm -hmm. it should be easier for people who wants to start Jenkins and try to implement things. Yeah, so what we started doing uh, in Jenkins 2.0, we created setup wizard. It offers some plugins by default. It also offers some additional plugins. But yeah, this functionality could be much better. You could, uh, for example, there are, if you use uh, Star Jenkins, you can also, uh, it asks you whether you would like to get uh, plugins, for example, for the net of iOS development. So right now it won't really show anything for iOS. Now it shows. So there is some bug in query, in yeah. query from the website. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, generally, when you use these filters and set up wizard, you get uh, the same advice. But the, 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 the chart that you showed, I think it's very useful because like at least it gives an like, overall picture about what we have. Also, maybe we can just define or divide this uh, chart for different groups. So, so maybe like for pipeline, a chart that which plugins are related to pipeline, as you suggested. Or maybe like 
we can just change this uh, graph to like maybe .NET. Moodle Pinky, all the really .NET related charts, uh, plugins in that style, maybe it can help. Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, generating such landscapes for arbitrary plugins and sets uh, is definitely an interesting project. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that it would require maybe a couple of months for experienced developer. Uh, but yeah, if somebody implements it in open source, it would be really usable, not only in Jenkins. Uh, yep. For me, I was rather thinking of specifically about uh, pipeline. Uh, but yeah, we... yeah. Okay. Uh, and well, if you want uh, to work on making pipeline plugins more discoverable, uh, I think it could be also a good subject. Yeah, I would like to look at it. I mean. It will be nice to at least help in this context to make people find things easier for them. Just I will look at it. I will just search for things. I don't know if I can find anything, but yeah, maybe one thing we could do during the hack fest or before is have a special session about making uh, plugins more discoverable. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a blog, not even a blog post. I sent a couple of uh, messages to the developer mailing list about that. I believe Mark has also created, uh, uh, for example, labeling uh, recommendations. But yeah, maybe we could have a session about how basically how to properly label your plugins, etc., to help users to discover them. Uh, yeah feels like a user experience. Okay, thanks uh, for, uh, for this suggestion because I will definitely put it at least to the idea list. Mm. Uh, I don't know the situation about the blue ocean, so it is not maintained anymore? Uh, well, I can uh, translate official position. Uh, so basically what was communicated in the developer mailing list is that uh, yeah, Cloudbees uh, right now doesn't invest in uh, active development. So mm -hmm. Cloudbees uh, will still fix critical bugs and uh, security issues. Uh, but right mm -hmm. now there is no, no ongoing investment to develop, to develop new features. And uh, there was a number of jobs, for example, a job for ablation extensibility. Mm. Uh, it wasn't delivered, and right now yeah, there is no any expectation about it being landed. Mm. So, yeah, personally, okay. I really, yeah, I really like Blotion uh, as a pipeline browsing tool. I have never used pipeline uh, creation tool. Uh, in Blotion or basically any other feature of Blotion except pipeline browsing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Mark has some expertise with that. Yeah, I've, I've used I've used it quite a bit to create pipelines. Is it useful? Uh, it is for me. I find it very simple. Uh, the things it can do, it does well. The things it can't do, it doesn't do. I found that it's it's really helpful for like helping people find the logs in the in the Jenkins log where something actually went wrong, right? I I usually administer pipelines for development teams, and I'll just get links to broken builds that say like I don't know what happened because they pull up the build log and it's it's really long and they can't find the exception. So Blue Ocean's made it really nice to be like, look at the red bubble. <laughs> the red bubble is the thing that failed. You should go read the logs there. Yeah, most uh, most of the time it works. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, personally, I would be really interested to, to somehow detach uh, the browsing engine from BlueOcean. So, uh, one of the big uh, BlueOcean architectural problems is that, uh, well, it was created in an opinionated way, so it provides some advantages because it provides good, uh, auto, uh, good uh, user experience out of the box. 
but it has uh, significant disadvantages because uh, you cannot really extend that. And uh, also it uh, declares a lot of dependencies. For example, if you want to use BlueOcean, you have to install Jira plugin and uh, more than 80 other plugins uh, so that it runs, which is probably not, uh, and for example, even at CloudBees, we had difficulties with certifying all these plugin sets. And it was one of the struggles for BlueOcean plugin uh, during the productization. So, mm, possible yeah. to uh, like implement this kind of uh, Blue Ocean uh, UI into the Jenkins code? I mean, is it possible? Or it, should be, a, or it should be a plugin always? I believe it's totally possible to make it a plugin. Um, I mean, it would be a plugin, but it would be still a part of the Jenkins web interface. So without creating new pages. Uh, whether it's possible to put it uh, right in the Jenkins core, um, likely not because Blotion requires a lot of pipeline specific stuff. So I would rather expect it to become a part of pipeline uh, plugin set, not uh, a part of the Jenkins core. I might be wrong uh, because, well, in principle, uh, you can uh, provide a lot of interfaces in Jenkins core and then somehow glue pipeline with that. But yeah, this would definitely require help uh, from uh, core pipeline plugin maintainers. I'm not sure how much bandwidth uh, they would have for that. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to do a lot with like looking at the the flow graph listener that they have implemented and like you'd probably have to do a lot of like SVG math to try and draw the path that Blue Ocean makes. Like I would sort of just assume that Blue Ocean probably has some hard coded like SVG uh, pictures that they render for those different like parallel branches and stuff like that. So being able to do it <clears throat> dynamically is going to Gonna involve some math or some fancy like front end frameworks for SV, SVG path animations or something. It'd be a cool, cool thing to do though. It would be. So if somebody is interested to work on that, uh, it would be cool. At some point I was really thinking about uh, doing it on my own, but yeah, for me, the problem is time. So yeah, I haven't even started. I also know for, for sure that Felix uh, did some discovery on that topic. He was presenting it at the uh, UXC meeting. Uh, but uh, yeah, also um, the conclusion that it would require a lot of time to make it happen. Yeah, and it, you'd have to wireframe a lot of it out. Like people build insane pipelines with parallel blocks inside parallel blocks inside nested stages. So we'd sort of have to make some decisions around what use cases are supported for visualization without yeah. uh, supporting everything. That's right. And the uh, motion um, was pretty limited about that. It got support for parallel stages just one or two years ago. But yeah. Yeah. I remember being excited when that came out. <laughs> um, okay, so were, were there any other topics from last week or new ones for this week that we wanted to talk about as part of this week's SIG meeting? It sounds like for the HackFest, um, we might have an idea around creating a landscape page and plug-in discoverability. Um, we, we, can, we decided that those, most of those pages for the documentation, don't don't map cleanly to the pipeline authoring SIG. Um, are there any other topics that we wanted to cover today? Maybe a quick update from me. So I returned back to the development of uh, Jenkins File Runner. Um, one thing I did, I just well, basically restored uh, all the functionality. So now you can really build and test the project. Mm -hmm. I plan uh, to uh, revive uh, my Bini project for using the Jenkins file runner uh, for pipeline testing. So basically integration testing framework uh, based on that. And a separate topic which I am planning to do quite soon is to include pipeline uh, as YAML uh, plugin right inside uh, Jenkins file runner. 
uh, because yeah, Jinx Follow Runner is an incubated project itself. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty uh, happy to do such change. So I will be yeah, there. actually. Your mm -hmm. I actually wanted to do it uh, before this meeting, but I didn't get to that. Uh, but yeah, maybe on the weekend I will finish that. But yeah, for me it's just another way to try out and maybe uh, to provide some feedback about pipeline as YAML engine. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can update. Uh, That'd be interesting. So, yeah. So, Ritesh, what did you say? Uh, maybe I can give some updates about the pipeline as YAML plugin. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I implemented these uh, special steps with their own code blocks, like with alignment, with ants, or with credentials, and also directory step. So I released the 0 0.3 version. So uh, my next step is to uh, implement this UI converter. So I find a way to add my link to pipeline syntax page. Uh, so I'm going to work on it. And also I would like to maybe in the future enable pipeline is YAML in pipeline Jipe itself. So it is only now available via uh, multi-branch pipelines, but maybe in future, if the community is happy to use uh, this pipeline as plugin, I can also implement the normal pipeline. Mm -hmm. Also, I will have some other questions. Uh, maybe I can just send you an email, Oleg, later. Is it okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm just making notes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. for me, it would be really interesting uh, to get Python as YAML adopted in the community. Um, so once you're ready uh, to promote it a bit, I'm happy to help with that. Thanks. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I just don't want to talk to you with the in details, like mm -hmm. when it will be the right time, what we should add. I mean, mm -hmm. this kind of things. Okay. Yeah, so my action item is still the same. Uh, try testing that. Yeah, I've been cleaning up my uh, release depth, uh, like uh, getting uh, pipeline, uh, yeah, Jenkins file runner, uh, getting uh, custom work packages for our flows back to life. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, after that, I wanted to work on pipeline as YAML anyway. So yeah, hopefully, I will um, do some testing there. I guess I can give an update on the, the 2.0 release for JT, just on, on the roadmap now. Um, I can share my screen, actually. Yeah. Oleg, you'd have, can you make me the host again? Oh, sorry. Please. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe you should uh, fix uh, permissions in this Zoom call later. <laughs> okay, uh, you yeah, should I'll work with, with Marky. Um, so the last time, since the last time we spoke, we've got uh, Jenkins.io project roadmap. <clears throat> so we, we have a new roadmap item for the 2.0 release uh, with a scope document that, that outlines all of, the, all of the things that I'm working on as part of the, the 2.0 release. A lot of it is like internal code cleanup, so that it's a little easier. <clears throat> so it's you know, remediating tech debt, but there's a ton of other features that the community has been asking for around this, um, specifically around like library resources. And because of how JT works right now, you can't resume a pipeline that, that works with JTE because of some, some dark magic associated with, with how uh, Jenkins pipelines work. So I'm going to be working on fixing that and improving the integration between the templating engine and 
workflow CPS itself. Um, I made a very, very pretty picture that visualizes the JTE uh, source code because at least from my perspective, the hardest part for jumping into a code base and helping out is knowing like where to get started. Um, so this, this picture that I'll, I'll end up putting in the documentation really describes like what is everything going on inside the templating engine just to see if there's anyone in the community that's interested in helping out on the development side of the house to implement some of these features. Um, so that's my update. I'll be, uh, my nights and weekends are, are working through a lot of these features and cleaning up a lot of the, the code. So mm -hmm. look forward to making more progress on that. Yeah. Uh, do you have, uh, do you receive a lot of external contributions at the moment? Not a ton. I have a ton of users that ask me questions daily, but not too many people that are contributing from a code standpoint yet. So if you have any advice around how to foster uh, joint maintenance or you know feature enhancements, I'd, I'd be open to figuring out how to grow the maintainers. Yeah, so the first and the easiest step is to have uh, newcomer friendly issues. So in GitHub, uh, you can create an initial label to use a good first issue. And if it's well described, etc., users tend to pick them up because GitHub right now, yeah, they do some tooling, tooling around uh, this label. So for example, when a newcomer contributor looks at the repository, they get an offer that, hey, do you like this project? Would you like to contribute? Uh, or also um, they have, uh, I, uh, Top level advisory tools uh, where uh, well, I'm not sure whether it's a new befriend issue, but yeah, uh, uh, still uh, uh, they, it will be discoverable uh, by users even uh, on the uh, top level GitHub because GitHub can uh, make some suggestions like, uh, yeah, good first issue, Java, Jenkins, okay, if it's your interest, here is a list of good first issues you could try. That's a good idea. So I'll, I'll pick a few issues that are uh, sort of a, an easier lift than some of the more complicated ones. And I'll, I'll label those and then provide a ton of instructions in the issue for exactly where those changes should be, should be made to try to help people get started. About the things you oh. said, like, so is it better to keep the issues on GitHub? Well, uh, keeping issues on GitHub provides some advantages uh, when you want to onboard contributors because issues are somewhat discoverable. Uh, they do not need uh, to create accounts uh, for uh, basically Jenkins Jira. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there, are, yeah, there are some tools like good first issues and other such special labels which help to promote visibility. Okay. Uh, whether it's a must-have, no, it's not must-have. Um, but uh, technically, for new projects, uh, if you ask me, I would rather use GitHub issues. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not. And a, yeah. It's an intentional, an intentional choice there because we don't have the complications that we have with plugins, where we have to be able to do security releases and keep security bug reports hidden. The, the we just don't get security bug reports to Jenkins.io, so for me it's a great excuse to learn how to try to fit GitHub issues into the Jenkins project workflow to see where they fit and where they don't. Well, um, right now, if you, so, for example, if uh, you Stephen could uh, make me a presenter, I could show how it works. Sure. So, yeah, Mark is totally right. If you talk about Jenkins IO, but even without Jenkins IO, it actually works pretty well these days. So for example, here, uh, templating engine. So here, if I want to create an issue, um, here I get, oh, I don't, okay. But I just get a pop-up here, report the security vulnerability, uh, check out the project security policy. So what happens, we inject uh, metadata on the top level. And this metadata basically uh, uh, injects file to all our repositories. 
which uh, documents uh, the security reporting flow. It looks even uh, better if uh, you have uh, issue templates. So for example, in this repository, we have issue templates configured. And here you can create bug report, feature request, uh, et cetera, and report the security vulnerability. It's here because again, um, GitHub has automatic processing of metadata and uh, the, uh, basically it shows you the same page here. Again, it pulls it from uh, the Jenkins uh, organization wide metadata. So you just gave me an, an action item for, for right after I get off this call to go create some issue templates for the, uh, the repository. Yeah, I was actually thinking about uh, creating default templates across the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it just uh, it didn't react on that because uh, it would require a wider discussion. Mm -hmm. But for example, for bug reports, for feature requests, uh, yeah, a common template would make total sense. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so it's something I had in mind when I started posting on boards and on GitHub automation, but then I switched to other tasks and basically I haven't really touched that, uh, but we could try. Anyway, right now you can just basically take these files and copy them in your repositories. So it's not oh, something yeah. like a rocket science. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I'm ashamed I haven't done that yet. I appreciate the uh, the uh, the reminder. Uh, I'm doing it mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> yeah. So, I think if you want to, to switch to GitHub issues, uh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you could uh, do that. I believe you you have all the permissions to enable it. So, basically, in any plugin, you just go to settings and uh, just say that enable issues done. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I was actually surprised when you said uh, at the meeting that you would rather go with uh, Jenkins Jira, uh, but uh, yeah. I mean, that's uh, I mean, what I used to, so that's why, but it seems mm -hmm. GitHub is very also useful and also better, yeah, why not? Yeah, it has some advantages. So the real disadvantage of GitHub is that uh, uh, you have difficulties with uh, linking uh, multi-repository issues and projects. Mm. So, for example, now on the Jenkins project, we have some uh, multi-organization projects, uh, like these ones, um, but it's not that convenient uh, as it is in Jira. Mm. But uh, if your project is uh, isolated enough, then in GitHub issues is quite convenient. I think it will be enough GitHub. I mean, it will be much more easier also for me to manage the issues. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can also create small uh, dashboards, including Kanban with all the automation, yeah. uh, if you want. Uh, so yeah. I will check it definitely. Okay. I should probably close this project. Okay, it's a separate story. So yeah. All right, yeah, I think this was, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead, Oleg. Yeah, I just want to say that we did a lot of uh, research about how to improve contributions before Hacktoberfest last year. And yeah, we also got a lot of data that basically GitHub issues is much more effective for promotion, promoting contributions than Jenkins Jira, which is slightly not surprising. Yeah, the issues always stare me right in the face, right? So if it's in Jira, I have to go somewhere else to see it. But if it's right on the source code repo, then, then I sort of am notified right away. And it shames me every day until I fix the issue. Something quite good. Um, all right, so we've got about 10 minutes left, but if there's, if there's nothing left, we can wrap up today's SIG meeting. I think this uh, ended up becoming very productive. Thank you, Oleg, for showing me some of those examples that I can go implement. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to cut the recording then, unless anyone has any last minute topics for today's meeting. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.